Alright guys, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a video on my Kundalini Awakening which started about six and a half years ago. So in order to keep this video a reasonable length I'm just going to focus on the initial few weeks for this video and then I'll do like a second part that goes into what happened after that. I mean, in a way I'd say that it started you know, it was it was stirring for quite a few years before this, but this is the point where it really kind of exploded into my life. So the night it actually awoke, I was I'd, I'd been watching a presentation by a guy called Dr. Bruce Lipton. It's called "Where Mind and Matter Meet: The Biology of Belief" or "The Biology of Belief: Where Mind and Matter Meet." I think it's really, really good presentation. And I'll I'll put a link in the description for anyone who wants to watch it. And it's all about epigenetics and how genes are essentially like a blueprint. They're not actually controlling anything. And it's the environmental signals which determine what parts of this the, the, the genetic blueprint are actually read or activated. So not only is it like the external environment, but it's also your internal environment and your thoughts and emotions that are affecting the genetic expression and so I'd been watching this presentation and afterwards well I'll just actually so for when I was about 18 I had a chest infection and it was a really severe one and I ended up in hospital for uh, quite a few days and afterwards, I just didn't really get rid of, of like this cough. And so I had like a chronic cough for about at least two years. To be honest, I think like aspects of it were linked to emotional uh, issues that I was going through at the time as well. But anyway, I had this like really bad cough for a number of years. And I ended up like really damaging the muscles around my left lung and my shoulder and sort of the side of my neck. And it like really misaligned my spine through this like chronic uh, coughing. I mean, it didn't. It wasn't like deb debilitating or anything, but it was just like a constant background pain that I had. So, so yeah. After watching this presentation, this just kind of like this thought form just came to me, like um, you know, kind of like a eureka moment or whatever. Just like this complete thought form, and it was, why if our bodies are in a, a constant state of regeneration and I, th I think they say like it's every seven years that basically your entire body is completely regenerated from the cellular level up I think it's perhaps like the heart and some aspects of the brain that, that are on a slightly longer or on a longer cycle than that but I think generally speaking like your entire body has been regenerated cellularly from, for over, in, within seven years so it just got me thinking like why does why do I still have this pain and physical damage in my, my body and my, and my back and stuff if the, the, all the muscles and everything has been completely regenerated, like some of it many times over? And it just dawned on me that it was the emotions and the memory of the pain that was still holding on to. And I kind of had this sort of vision that if my like spirit or soul or the entirety of my personality was implanted in another body that like really quickly this body would this new body would just like conform to the those um those like tensions and and damage and so yeah i <laughs> i just this kind of realization just just got me thinking and so later on in the evening when i was um going to bed I just started meditating and got into like a really deep state of meditation and entered into a really heartfelt communication with my cells. I think like possibly uh, Bruce Lipton had talked about um, communicating with the cells in his lecture, I'm not sure, but anyway. So I just opened this like really heartfelt dialogue with my, with my cellular community in my body and just kind of apologising to it for the pain and suffering that I put it through and also just 
saying saying to it that would this community had come together in this life for you know for a reason and from now on we were not gonna hold on to this pain we're gonna release it yeah that we could do it that we could release it and so i started uh, in this meditative, meditative state i started visualizing my body completely healed and just feeling like really deeply it, how it would feel to not have this kind of because it felt like a the 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 thing the pain had felt like it i don't know it felt like my body was always twisted and just like this pressure that was uncomfortable and so i completely imagined how it would feel to be free of that pain and my body realigned and as i was doing it i could all it, it was it was i couldn't see it but it was almost like um in my mind's eye i could see like this kind of blueprint of my body or something very really sort of subtle but and I, and I totally felt what it would be like to, like I said to be free of this pain and so yeah then I, then I fell asleep and in the middle of the night I woke up like really abruptly and it felt like this clamp had been zapped around my left thigh it was like a really tight band of pins, pins and needles really intense and that had kind of woken me up and straight away I felt really, really sick. So I rushed to the toilet. I was really violently sick, like kind of to the level, you know, when you're like younger and you just have those like really, sometimes like when, you, when you're really ill, it was just like really prolonged vomiting. And so I got back in the bed and this tight clasp kind of pins and needles thing had, had disappeared, but there were all these like weird shooting sensations up and down my left leg and my left toe was, it felt to be like vibrating with this really tingling energy. I was kind of thinking, well, that's really, really bizarre. I never thought, felt anything like it before. And eventually I fell back asleep and I woke up in the morning and these symptoms were like still going on, these kind of shooting sensations and, and they weren't just confined to my left leg anymore. They were kind of moving all through my body like these t twisting they, they, they were quite mild at first and anyway so i went to work and and these kind of sensations carried on over the next few days they were but they, they did begin to sort of intensify and at the time i was kind of like wow i've I'm, <laughs> i've triggered like some kind of healing in my body and it, it, one of the feelings as well was it felt like the the muscles on the tendons were kind of like being stretched internally like they were kind of like glue or something that was like being pulled and and like stretched and of the like I said, over the next few days like the, the, these kind of movements and it felt like energy like shooting through my body just kind of got more and more intense and it got to the point where in the evenings I felt like I needed to just like move with this energy and, and release it, and so I was. I, I sort of did that um, over 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 a period of days, and I was also having strange visionary experiences as well, like with these movements. I remember one time, as I was moving, I could feel like this energy like swirling up through my body, and it seemed to be like when it seemed to hit these certain points, I had like these flashes of imagery, they were, like these different animals. It was really weird, but I have actually read about some shaman believe that in each sort of chakra point, you have a specific animal. So yeah, that's kind of uh, inter interesting in, in relation to that. And yes, yeah, so like by the end of the week, these, these sensations have got really pretty intense twisting movement moving through my body like a good way to describe it i guess is it felt you, you know how like your body feels solid essentially <laughs> it felt like the inside of my body was not kind of solid anymore it was like a liquid ocean and all these kind of really twisting and um spiraling currents were now like moving through it but there were loads of places where this energy couldn't really move there's like blockages in the physical body and it, it kind of got stuck there and i think that was like what was essentially triggering these random 
sort of movements. Well, when I say random, they weren't really random. They were kind of extremely precise. My body had like moved into these kind of positions and it felt like it was moving into just the right position to kind of stretch my body in a certain place and then it had like released some tension there and, and move somewhere else. And anyway, one night by the end of the week, I'd, I'd gone to see a friend, a uh, friend's house I'd gone to a friend's house to talk, kind of talk this stuff through. And that evening, when I was uh, lying, uh, lying in bed in, in their spare room, it got really intense, and I, I didn't, I didn't like sleep at all that night. And so as I was lying there, this energy like really shooting through my body. I started moving to this really altered state of consciousness, and I could see these spirit type entities around me they were about four surrounding me and if anyone's watched my previous video that I did on a, my, a five dry gram mushroom experience that I had they, they seem to be like these same entities that I'd seen previously uh, in the at the onset of that experience and it seemed like they were controlling this flowing motion and like somehow they were Somehow they were involved in this in this process, and then this like white portal kind of opened up up above me, and there were all these similar kind of like shadowy spirit ent entities moving through this portal. It's really weird. It, it it seemed like they were the energetic intention I got from them was that they were coming to observe this process and I kind of got the impression that they were related to me in some way like possibly ancestors or something I don't know anyway this this process went on and it seemed like they were moving the energy in me some in some way but also I was kind of controlling it with my fingers as, as I moved, really crazy. And, and, and at one point I felt these energy streams like move out of my body and I was actually f f uh, perceiving energy beyond like my physical body. And they kind of moved out and they were like, and it like came in and it was like drilling into my temples. It was really quite painful because I think there was like so many blockages in my body at this stage. And anyway, it was like drilling in and and then it just like hit into my brain and I could feel like the top of my head open up and it was literally like, I mean, I always thought like, you know, in, in um, Bud Buddhist and Hindu iconography when they talk about, uh, or is it Buddhist, Hinduism? Anyway, in Buddhism they talk about like the thousand petaled lotus as the crown chakra and I could feel all these, what felt like little petals opening up in like a spiral around my head and this energy was like shooting out of the top of my head. Absolutely crazy. And so anyway, I got no no sleep for the rest of that evening and come like six o'clock, I just got up and got a shower. I was just like completely amazed at what had, what had happened the previous night. And so like a few days later, I'd, no, the next day, I went back uh, home, and I was lying in bed, and I just like got this really, just like this real kind of fear came over me, real panic. I was just like totally paranoid about because I told look quite a few people about this, and I was think just thinking like, oh my god, everyone's just gonna think I've gone completely insane. <laughs> people, what the hell is like people gonna think? And and just like all this fear was like coming over me, and. It felt like my old personality was completely under threat. You know, like some kind of ego death experience. And I've not really had panic attacks before, but I imagine that it, it was a similar kind of thing of what people who have panic attacks feel. Like this cold icy chill came over me and then then the energy just just drained out of my body and amazingly as well to me anyway <laughs> the as it, as it like kind of all drained out my body I felt like the, the the 
this kind of tubular uh, snake-like f- flowing energy that kind of drained through, and 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 it was all spa- all the sparkling as well throughout the entire body. Anyway, as it drained down, this like winding energy just like wound itself <laughs> round itself at the base of my spine, like just like the uh, three and a half. Uh, you know, like, um, <laughs> like, like, you, if you look up information in relation to Kundalini, you'll see that it's said to lie dormant at the base of the spine, the energy prior to, prior to it being awoken, wrapped around itself three and a half times, and I just felt this pattern of energy lock, and then it just shut down, and it was completely gone. And so then for a week, there was absolutely nothing, no symptoms whatsoever. And I was kind of like pretty down about this in a way, really. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd realized, I'd realized at this point that it was a Kundalini awakening. And I was of the idea that I'd, I'd like triggered a self healing on a, on a cellular level. I'd, I'd triggered like this self healing and also that had awoken and the Kundalini energy because I was aware of Kundalini prior to this. I'd, I'd actually come across information on Kundalini about two years before this awakening in an absolute sea of synchronicity, funnily enough, uh, which I'll, I'll go into perhaps in another video. But so yeah, it kind of dawned on me that this was a Kundalini awakening. And so I kind of felt like, whoa, I've, I've this fear somehow aborted the process, like my, my, unwillingness to move forward or or just my fear essentially as as like I said aborted the process somehow and so over the over this week when it had all gone I just spent the evenings again like meditating and I remember one evening specifically lying in bed and I was just talking to the universe again like in a really heartfelt kind of meaningful way and just saying to the universe if this is my path then I'm I'm ready to walk it and I won't I won't be afraid of the process any longer you see looking back like I said at the time I felt that it was because of this fear or something but I actually think in one way or another, well, I'll put it this way. I think a Kundalini awakening is preordained prior to incarnation. It's something that is going to happen in a life. And there's plenty of reasons why I think this, which I'll talk about again in in different, different videos. But I also think like the aspect of the soul or whatever you want to call it, that's incarnated, still has the has the choice once it's here. And I feel like that this that process that occurred in that week of it shutting down and then me having like this dialogue with the universe was it was kind of like the universe saying, Are you sure? Are you sure? And so when I entered into this dialogue and said that I'm ready to do this if this is if this is my path and 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 then yeah it just basically just like exploding into my body again shooting through shooting up out of uh, the base um like the base of my spine kind of up my spine but it, it 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 didn't travel like straight up my spine because like I say my spine was misaligned it felt like there's all these stuck places that it couldn't cleanly flow anyway and and so yeah that that was it, it was it was back on then like uh, full on and so over the, so, so that's really the initial stages of the awakening. And I'll do I'll do another video that that explores what happened from then on. Uh, but really briefly, over the next few weeks, it got more and more intense, and all sorts of physical symptoms started manifesting. Extreme fatigue, like extreme pain. And my physical health essentially completely collapsed. 
I was bed bound for about practically anyway bed bound for about two and a half years could barely walk all sorts of crazy symptoms that I'll talk about in the next video and yeah it's, it was um, it got pretty hellish for a while <laughs> to be honest but I think with every healing process that's part of it you know like you've got to get worse before you can get better in some in, in some way like if you think about when you when you're ill just with like for example like uh, the flu or whatever the part where you're like really suffering and really ill is actually the part where your body is clearing and healing you you know so yeah <laughs> that, that's what happened next and so yeah in the following video I'll talk more in depth about all the symptoms and stuff because I've kind of uh, glazed over it a little bit in this video in relation to like the actual symptoms and I'll do a video specifically on symptoms and talking about ways that I've learned to like help ease them and Just ways that I've I've found to help get through it, but it's a tough, tough journey. Um, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know. It gets it gets easier as the years progress. So yeah, that's my story of the initial couple of weeks of awakening. As well as all the physical stuff, there were there were lots of like psychic uh, sort of phenomena going on. But like I said, I'll leave that for another video. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments about what I've spoken about, please uh, do leave them down below. And obviously, I appreciate like for some people, like some of the stuff I've talked about in this video is like crazily far out. But anyway, that's the way it is. So yeah, nice one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with a new video. All right, peace.